Wow, what a fantastic print this is. This is the Voronoi version of my stepped bin, and this absolutely clean print came off of the CR10S Pro that I have right here. This is the latest CR10 style printer from Creality. It came out two years after the original CR10, and even though the prints are absolutely fantastic, today I'll be telling you why you might be better off going with the original. I'll tell you all about it in today's review here on Make Anything. Cool. Hey friends, Devin here with Make Anything, and today I'm reviewing the new CR10S Pro by Creality. It's not entirely new, it's about eight months old, but I like to thoroughly test my printers, and I've had two of these for about six months. Today I'm gonna to be looking at all the cool new features of the CR10S Pro, and also explaining why I would still go with the CR10 as someone who's new to 3D printing. The CR10 is absolutely one of my very favorite printers, and if you check out the favorites section of my website, you'll see that it's my number one recommended printer for people getting into 3D printing. I've had so much time to get to know this CR10 printer, and you might notice that I have several upgrades that I'll tell you about, but first, let's take a look at the new CR10S Pro and what that's got going for it. The S-Pro is definitely the sleekest CR10 yet, with all the controls built directly into the redesigned base, underneath the tried and true classic rectangular CR10 frame. The simple LCD screen and physical control knob on the original CR10 has been replaced with this nice large full color touchscreen, which makes it really easy to navigate the menu and get to all the different settings, including the all new leveling mode, which probes 16 points across the build surface in order to account for warping or other inconsistencies. The S Pro now features an all metal extrusion system, including dual Bontech extruder gears that lead to a high quality Capricorn PTFE tubing, and there's also a filament runout sensor. Like many runout sensors, it doesn't detect filament jams but if you run out of filament clean, it'll pause the print and wait for you to put more filament in so you can resume the print. What used to be multiple loose cables have now been consolidated into one nice flat ribbon cable, which certainly helps with organization. And the Z axis now runs on two steppers and two threaded rods, which is meant to help with stability. Likewise, the heated bed now moves along two aluminum extrusions instead of just one as it did on the original CR10. The 24 volt power supply doubles the voltage going into the heated bed, which means it can heat up much quicker, reaching 110 degrees Celsius in about five minutes. We've also got the steppers running on TMC Trinamic drivers, which make this the most quiet CR10 yet. Sure, for the extra $200, you are getting a lot of new features on the CR10S Pro, but if you're like me, the one thing that really matters is print quality. Here in front of me, I've got a small selection of prints done on my CR10, my CR10S, and my CR10S Pro printers, and if you take a good look at them, you might find that they all look pretty much the same. Fantastic. They all have an amazing print quality, the prints that you can get off of this printer and this printer will both look fantastic as long as you've got it tuned and tinkered with. Even if the S Pro has some feature that you really like, you're often better off just adding that upgrade to the CR10 yourself. That said, the main reason that I prefer the CR10 is that the CR10S has some upgrades that I actually consider downgrades. They're making the experience less enjoyable for me. First of all, there's the build surface. I really like the glass build plate that comes on the CR10. Glass is awesome because it leaves you with a really clean, shiny finish on the bottom, and it's really easy to remove prints. If you just let the build plate cool down, prints usually just pop right off. If you do have a problem with bed adhesion, add a little bit of hairspray, 
and that'll usually do the trick. Now the CR-10S Pro has this aluminum build plate with build tack on top of it. First of all, aluminum build plates do have a tendency to warp as they heat up and cool down over and over again. And build tack, unless the build plate is removable and flexible so you can just bend the build plate and pop off prints, build tack is really finicky. And I find that half of the time the prints are too close and it's really hard to remove prints and you often end up having little chips somewhere in the print where you slammed it with the spatula or the prints don't adhere very well. Also, you're left with a print surface that is more matte and it often has traces of the filament from the last thing you printed stuck to it. It's just not so great. You can already see there's a chunk missing because one of my prints was sticking too hard and that spatula just took out a chunk of build tech. Glass is just so much better in my opinion. It's so much more forgiving. With build tech, your bed has to be absolutely perfectly level or you might run into some problems. And that leads to my next and biggest problem with the CR-10S Pro, and that's the auto leveling. The CR-10S Pro has this little conductive sensor, which it uses to probe the plate at different points and auto level the printer. Unfortunately, it's just not implemented very well at all with the CR-10S Pro. When I first got these printers, it was truly terrible because every time you turn the printer off and on again, all the settings for the auto leveling were erased. So you'd have to run an auto level every time you restart your printer. In the past few months, Creality released a new firmware. So I had to flash that new firmware in there and now it does save those settings, but it's still not consistent. So even if you have those leveling settings in there, the Z height just isn't always the same. So sometimes it's too close to the bed and sometimes it's a little too high, right? Like two prints back to back, you'll have that problem. And that is never an issue I've had with the CR-10. Manual leveling is not that difficult, especially on the CR-10. I mean, it's just a matter of tuning these little knobs on the bottom. I often do it as the print is starting, and once you've got it down, it's there. You can print over and over again, and you're not going to have a problem, as with this CR-10S, where it tries to do the conductive leveling, and every time it's off by a fraction of a millimeter. Luckily, the CR-10S Pro does have a baby Z-step option in the print, so you can manually adjust the height of the nozzle very slightly as the print is going on, but it's just so much easier on the CR-10 that I don't really understand the uh, allure here. <laughs> also, because this printer has to probe the center of the bed before every print, you lose the ability to do certain techniques like the multi-pass, multi-color technique that I've used on the CR-10 printer to create really nice multi-color prints. Can't really do that as easily on the CR-10S Pro. The same goes with some other cool upgrades that I've done on the CR-10. You can't attach this extruder knob to manually feed filament, as well as this knob to manually adjust the Z height. You can't do this on the CR-10S Pro because it has those dual Z rods. Personally, I've never had any problems with this CR-10 regarding this single Z thread. There are plenty of ways to adjust this beam to make sure that it's really sturdy and rolls up and down smoothly and structurally sound. If you live somewhere where you constantly lose power, you're not gonna be able to resume prints with the CR-10, but you can on the CR-10S Pro. But you can also do that on the CR-10S model, which is right between these two. That model has the dual Z rods, it has the power resume function, and it also has the filament runout sensor. So if anything, I would go for that model before going all the way to the CR-10S Pro just because of that leveling issue and other little problems I've mentioned. It's definitely nice that this has a 24 volt power supply versus the 12 volt supply here. The bed can heat up a lot quicker. Uh, it's a quieter printer. It's got drivers that are a lot more silent. It's also got that touch screen, which is a little easier to navigate than this old school knob on the CR-10. Those are some great features that the CR-10S Pro has that the CR-10 doesn't have, but they're just not necessary to me. And you know, I like to save money where I can. So in terms of just getting a great print, the CR-10 does it as well as the S Pro. The CR-10 S Pro is a bit more compact. I really do like that unified body, but I was able to basically reduce the width of the CR-10 by just as much with a few extra upgrades. I printed these CR-10 S legs that Augustine Floalistic designed, and I'll link to those in the description. And uh, that allowed me to put 
the whole power unit underneath the printer, which saves some space, as well as this top loading spool holder that I designed, which is also really nice. All right, there you have it. The CR10, the CR10S Pro, both fantastic printers. I love Creality, but I gotta say, I'm still going with the CR10 or maybe the CR10S. I do have a previous mega review on those two printers, as well as the Ender 3 and some other CR10 style printers if you wanna learn a bit more about these machines. I hope you found this video informative and if you're interested in purchasing one of these machines, I'd really appreciate it if you use the affiliate links in the description. They don't cost you any extra money, but they do give me a small cut. I will also put links to download the STL files for all the sweet upgrades I did on the CR10, as well as these really cool models that I've been printing. Some of them at least, others I'm still working on, but if you're subscribed, you'll get them soon enough. Finally, if you're watching this video way in the future, I would suggest checking out my website, makeanything.design favorites, for a more up-to-date list on my currently recommended printers. Well then, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. If you still have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments. I try to read every single one. And uh, yeah, that's it. So until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired.